Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today, we're going to look at combinatorial families. So, we have this fancy script, A, B, and C, and these guys are combinatorial families. All of these have respective generating functions. So, why, and of course, what is a combinatorial family? Well, a combinatorial family is just a sequence of coefficients, which we call A0, A1, A2, and these are just the number of ways to count objects with some length. So for the first slot, a0, this is when the object has a length of 0. And a1 would be a length of 1, so on and so forth. So suppose we have the generating function 1 plus 2x plus 2 squared, x squared, so on and so forth. We know this is 1 over 1 minus 2x. This could be, say, a of x. Then this is a bijection with the combinatorial family a, whose sequence would be 1, 2, 2 squared, 2 cubed, so on and so forth. So, you see we have two completely different problems that give us the same generating function. Then those two problems would relate to the same combinatorial family. So why do we need this notion? Well, combinatorial families are used to count more complex objects and they have some very nice properties. Let's say we have a combinatorial family C, which is the union of two different families A and B. Well, we can find the generating function for C by adding the generating functions for A and B. So for example, in A, we want at least one zero followed by the same amount of ones. So if we have one zero, then we need to have one one, which is one object of length two. So our first object in A of x is going to be x squared, because there's one way to have an object of length two. If we take two zeros, then we need two ones. So we have one object of length four. And this goes on and on. And we can see this is the same thing as x squared times 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth, so on and so forth. So this is just the generating function x squared over 1 minus x squared. Suppose we have b, which is the same concept, but we have ones followed by zeros. So this has the same generating function. So this is just going to be x squared over 1 minus x squared. And suppose we have a family C, which just says we want a clump of zeros or a clump of ones, followed by the same number of a clump of zeros or a clump of ones, provided they're opposite. So here we can have 0, 1, or 1, 0. So there's two objects of length 2, so that's 2x squared. We can have 0, 0, 1, 1, or 1, 1, 0, 0. So that's two objects of length 4. This will continue. This is the same thing as saying, well, that's 2x squared times 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth. So we know this is the same thing as 2x squared over 1 minus x squared. So we could figure out c of x like that, or we can realize that this is just saying, well, it's something from a or something from b. So this should be equal to ax plus bx which we know is just x squared over 1 minus x squared plus x squared over 1 minus x squared, which happens to be equal to 2x squared over 1 minus x squared. So these two are exactly the same. So we've just proven that this works. Of course, this is one example. The details are just really basic set theory. So that is the union operator. Of course, sets can also be Cartesian products, so if we have C is one member of A followed by one member of B, then the number of ways for C of X is just A of X times B of X. So suppose a C is a string from A followed by a string from B, so that means it might be 0, 1, 1, 0, or 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, so we have one from A, one from B, well, that's just AX times BX. So ax was x squared over 1 minus x squared, 
and bx was x squared over 1 minus x squared. So this is just going to be x to the 4 over 1 minus x squared, That's all squared. So you can see a generating function like this is probably a little bit harder to count, especially when we just take a look at objects individually and it gets a little bit more difficult. So having these rules really simplifies the problem because we can say, hold on a second, we can break C up into one part from A and one part from B, and we know the two generating functions for AX and BX. So finding the generating function for this cross product is really simple. So that's A cross B. Now what happens when we want to take more than A cross B? Say we want A cross A cross A cross A cross A. Well, if you remember, a to the k, again, is just equal to a times a times a all the way to times a, and we do this k times. So this is kind of like just a really giant cross product. So again, we just multiply ax times ax times ax k times. So this detail up here is really just this previous slide with uh, more reiterations of multiplication. So suppose C is the number of compositions of some number n using two parts. Well, we can start with A, and A is the number of ways of composing n. So specifically with, um, with one part. So how many ways can we do that? Well, AX could be, well, you can take one, or you can take two, or you can take three, or four, or five, or six, and go on forever. We can't take zero because, you know, we're composing a number with at least one part. So, this is the same thing as X over one minus X. So, when we compose a number n using two parts, well, we take one number from our first a of x, say 3, and then we take a number, another number from our second a of x, and that number will add up to n. So, c of x, because we want two parts, actually let's say c, is equal to c of x, and this is just a of x squared. So this is just going to be x over 1 minus x all squared. And if you want a composition using, say, m parts, then it's just x over 1 minus x all to the power m. So that's compositions. And what does a composition look like? Well, before we did partitions, so let's do compositions of the number 4. So, compositions of 4, you can have 3 plus 1, or you can have 1 plus 3, in compositions order does matter. We can have 2 plus 2, we can have 2 plus 1 plus 1, which means we can have 1 plus 2 plus 1, which means we could have 1 plus 1 plus 2, and then we could have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So that's compositions of 4. And if we do partitions, then we would not allow these three, because order does not matter with partitions. So that's what a composition is, and that's the generating function for finding it into n parts. So, here's a more interesting thing. Um, now, what if we don't multiply a by any specific number, and we say, you know what, we'll just take any combination of strings in a, no matter the length. Well, this is the a star operator. And if you remember the star operator from finite state automata in discrete math one, you may or may not have covered it. Um, we have an alphabet, say sigma, which has the letters a and b, and 
sigma star are all possible combinations that you can get from A and B. So we can take neither A or B and we can get the empty string, or we can take one A or one B. Maybe we want to take two A's or maybe an A and a B, or maybe a B then an A, or maybe two B's, then we could take three A's and that just goes on forever. So that's the number of ways we can do it. Well, in terms of generating functions, that means that A star is really just all the members of A taken zero times with all the members of A that are length one with all the members of A of length two. In fact, I should really subscript these. So that's zero, one, two, and then we take all the members of A with length three, and that just goes on forever. And we know with our union rule that if we have A or B, it's AX plus BX. So this is really A zero of X. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna superscript these. So it's AX to the zero plus AX to the one plus AX squared plus AX cubed, dot, dot, dot. And this is just the generating function for one over one minus A of X. Because if we replace X with A of X, we get one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed. So one over one minus X, we substitute back A of X and we get one over one minus A of X. So A star is equivalent to one over one minus A of X. Pretty cool. Now, why is this cool? Well, here's a very easy example to show. So C is gonna be the family of finite binary strings. So A is gonna be zero or one. So what is the generating function A of X? Well, what is the length? If the length is zero, we only have one choice, but if the length is one, we choose zero or one. So we have two choices. So we have um, we have one choice for x0. For x1, we have two choices, so 2x. For if we have a length 2, well, we can do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So we have four choices for length 2. And basically, the length is going to be 2 to the n. So we get 8x cubed, so on and so forth. So ax is going to be just 2x. So what it's saying is that, well, sorry, I, sh I should write this. This is 1 over 1 minus 2 to the x. You know what? I just did c of x, not a of x. I did c of x. <laughs> so that's c of x. c of x, you have, for a family of finite binary strings, you have, you know, one choice of length zero, two choices for length one, four choices for length two. So we did C of X without A star. So what is A? Well, here's what A is. A of X is really just two X because you only have the choice zero or one. So you have two choices, that's it. So C is really just equal to A star. And this is one over one minus a of x, which is just equal to one over one minus two x. So this is a fairly straightforward example, but we can see they're equivalent. And sorry for being a little bit confusing by doing c of x first, but this example isn't really, I'd say, conventional. And on the second midterm, which I have written already and is uploaded to trebtutor.com, there is a much more complicated example that you can do with this video and with the previous generating function videos. It is a four part question and it involves binary strings, much more challenging, but is very good at showing uh, the star relationship. So I would highly suggest doing that. Uh, there will be a video with the solutions there. So, when that video is done and uploaded, you can also check there for a nice verbal explanation of what's going on. The reason I'm not going too in-depth for this is because um, 
most of you won't cover combinatorial families in a discrete math 2 course. You would cover them in a combinatorics course at a higher level because this stuff is pretty dumbed down compared to what you would do in a 300, 400 level or third year, fourth year math course. So uh, we're just avoiding that at this point because if I went too advanced, it would be sort of beyond the scope of, I think, where a second discrete math course should be. So those are the operators you need to know. You need to know um, A or B. You need to know A times B. You need to know A to the K. And you need to know A star. So these are the different operators you could do. Um, suppose I have a family C, which is equal to A star, but we don't want the empty string in C. Then what do we do? So no empty string. Well, there's two ways of looking at this. This really is saying that C union, the empty string, is equal to A star. So this is the same thing as saying that C is equal to A star minus the empty string. So when we take C of X, this is equal to 1 over 1 minus A of X minus 1 because the empty string is length 0 and that's one way. So this would be equivalent to A of X over 1 minus A of X after, you know, doing some algebra. So if, if we don't want the empty string included, um, we get A of X over 1 minus A of X. So that could save some time. And that's pretty much the only trick they could do. They say, well, we don't want the empty string included, but you have to remember is that A star always has the empty string. So if you're using the A star operator, you're going to get the empty string. So if you don't want it, you need to subtract it. So that's the only thing that might trip you up in a complicated question. So that's combinatorial families, and that concludes generating functions for now. We will be using these in recurrence relations. So that's going to be next. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If not, feel free to share this with your friends who are taking courses who might find it difficult. I'm more than happy to help. And check out the subreddit if you have very specific questions.